Il pas easy. Crunchyroll Games hasn't been putting out too many notable titles since they've been focusing on the mobile market. Their most recent publishing venture, Grand Alliance, is the closest release to beating my expectations, but not by much. Still, it's nice to see an original IP in the sea of anime licenses available. You'll be okay. You're a princess. I have to think what my father will do to me. Grand Alliance is set in an industrial steampunk style world where a war rages over a powerful magic source known as Spires. It all began after Amelia's father and kingdom were betrayed. The actual intro was pretty impactful and helped set the gravity of the situation for Amelia and the war that was about to take place. Thanks to the writing and beautiful voice acting of the star statted dubbed anime cast, I was able to care more about these characters from the start. There are quite a few twists and turns that will take you for a ride during the campaign. I only wish that the voice acting remained for the majority of the story, as they are only present in major cutscenes. When I first heard of Grand Alliance, it was touted as an RPG brawler. I was expecting a beat em up style game with a lot of button mashing, however, it was totally the opposite experience and actually plays more like an MMORPG. Each stage has you take three squad members to run around and beat up bad guys and monsters. There's no button mashing, and your characters will auto attack nearby enemies, and you can activate abilities depending on what the situation calls for. Over time, you'll build your overdrive meter on each character and can launch unique attacks or spells against enemies. Each ability is a skill shot, so you need to choose where and when you can use them. It's not the worst gameplay mechanic in a gacha, but I truly was expecting a beat em up style game. When it comes to the gacha pulling, you're looking to pull 5 star spells as opposed to characters since they're equipable and can create a good variety of ways to approach battles. Pulling characters is obviously important to flush out your roster, but that's pretty much it since certain equipable spells can only work on specific characters. There's a tavern where you can go to recruit new characters with the right amount of currency, but again, your main focus will probably be on gacha pulls with the spells, as that's where most of the power comes from. This was another gacha that came out with a lot of missions, but very few chapters. In order to offset this, there's a quite a significant difficulty spike at about chapter 3. Stamina management also comes into play here, as the game isn't as forgiving to help you refill the stamina bar in order to continue farming. Playing missions to collect items, leveling up your characters in relation to your stamina felt a little off. It seemed like I should have been getting more materials with the amount of stamina I was paying to enter each stage. Plus, things like class emblems needed in order to limit break your characters are only available on certain days of the week. It's not uncommon to have a system like this, but to have that long of an arbitrary wait time just to collect the last emblem was rather annoying. It basically meant I had to wait a few days in order to strengthen a character to help me beat a level in the main campaign if I needed to. There's also this odd Clash Royale style of obtaining items through opening time-locked chests you can collect. I would often forget I even had these chests, so they did kind of just stockpile up in the end for a while. PvP gameplay is rather interesting yet simple. You just take 9 of your characters against another 9 but in waves. So it's basically 3 versus 3 for 3 waves until one player's party falls. Which is a shame as there could have been more done here to spice up the gameplay. If we were allowed to control units like in the main campaigns, such as being able to use their abilities, it would have been a bit more enjoyable. Otherwise wins are pretty much dependent on your squad's combat score instead of strategic planning or movement. The Emperor has asked me to leave your discipline to him on this occasion. Father... And you, Leon. You are my child and as such you have a responsibility. Not just to me, but to the entire Empire. Honestly, I wanted to wait a bit for this review to see if they would add anything to the game to make it stand out a bit more, but that never happened. Grand Alliance is a step above what we've seen in previous Country Roll games offerings, but not by much. It's a shame because there was so much attention to detail put into the amazing artwork and well thought out suspenseful story, but they didn't execute on decent gameplay systems tailored to mobile devices. There is clearly a direction and vision for Grand Alliance, but it's pretty much downhill after the game's opening. I know I've always touted that I'm into games with amazing stories despite the gameplay, but Grand Alliance made it difficult to stick with that idea. Well, at least it's better than Overlord Mass for the Dead. Noisy Pixel is giving Grand Alliance a 6.5 out of 10. Thank you for watching. Please read the full review on NoisyPixel.net. NoisyPixel is run by a group of gamers who work hard to deliver news, reviews, previews, and more. Please subscribe to keep up with all our future content.